we'd like for you to tell some of the folks out here in the listening audience, uh, viewing audience, about the SOS, and uh, you can probably tell it not, like no one else can. Would you please tell us? Well, you know, we had a, a group of nice, eccentric guys and girls down here in the late 40s and early 50s, and a lot of us thought it was time to get them back together again, and the time was right, so we did it in 1980, and we've been doing it since, and I think we'll continue. Uh, these, this is the nicest group of people in the world, shaggers, beach music lovers, rhythm and blues lovers. You just, it's the most congenial group of folks you'll ever find anywhere. Well, thank you, Gene. Uh, Gene, would you uh, please explain uh, some of the background on the original organizers and the people that have helped you put this thing together and, and give us some of the background about how you went about that. Okay, in 1980, I, I called a committee together, uh, Dennis Beam, Tom Lilly, Betty Sims Presley, Jack Nichols, George Meyer, and several others. And we had a meeting and we put together a list of people. And then we went to the press and to see if it was a story because we didn't know how to reach the people. Case Gary and Jerry Bledsoe, the Charlotte Observer, started writing articles. And the next thing you knew, it was a AP UPI uh, wire service story nationally. And we were looking for a party of 100 people, and we had 3,000 that first one, Fred. SOS Weekends really started as a revival of something that originated about 40 years earlier. Enjoy coming down here. I wouldn't miss it for a million dollars. It brings back my me memories from a long time ago. And I mean a long time ago, but they were the happiest days of my life, I think. Yes. Don't tell my wife I said that. Well, would you like to share with us some of your uh, thoughts of the earlier days and, and kind of give us some background on how long you've been coming? And Well, the first time I, I was I was staying at, uh, at Myrtle Beach, and uh, R.B. Cromwell said, have you ever been to Ocean Drive? And I said, no, I haven't, but I'd like to see what it looks like. So we hitchhiked up here one afternoon and uh, walked up on the pavilion that was right over here, Robert's Pavilion, and, and I fell in love with it right then. I met Leon Williams, and he was working here, and he didn't know me from anybody, and I said, hey, fella, I'd like to go to work here. And he says, I'll see what I can do. And he came back in a little while and said, okay, you got a job. You can come to work um, whenever you want to start. And I said, well, I got to go get my clothes at Myrtle Beach and I'll come back, yeah, which I did. I went down and uh, got my clothes and came back and worked here every summer after that. That was uh, 1940, uh, 1945. Nighttime fun here was we closed bingo up. We worked bingo, and then we'd close it up, and during the week we'd close maybe um, 10.30, uh, and the only thing to do was Caddy Cone across the street was a guy that sold soft drinks and crackers and uh, had a one little glaring light bulb over his little shack, and we would all sit out in front of it and uh, listen to him play the dulcimer and drink Coca-Colas. And then we would come back over to the uh, pavilion, and we had a key to the jukebox. We would would open the jukebox and play the numbers, play the records. Uh, but there were the girls. There were no girls, uh, so we'd dance with each other. I taught Leon everything he knows. Well, is this when the shag uh, originated? We we don't know what it, we didn't call it the shag. I don't know what we called it, then, but the shag was a word. They came up, and uh, but it's the same dance. Well, in the early 50s, my group called it fast dance and jitter and, and those uh, sort of abbreviations, but what did you call it in the 40s? Uh, it was the jitterbug. Actually, we wore pegged pants, so it had to be the jitterbug. We're standing here in uh, Beachfront Ocean Drive at uh, Fat Harold's Club. Now, Eddie, you've contributed uh, all your life to this dance and social activity uh, that we now call the shag. Yes. And uh, would you, if you will, uh, tell the viewing audience uh, your background and interest in this dance, Ed? Well, Fred, it's like this. At the time that we were doing it, when someone asked us to dance, we'd dance. We never knew we were creating memories. And now, all of a sudden, these were the good times that we had down here at that time. And we made a lot of friends. 
And as you see now, every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And our friendship has seemed to be kind of um, uh, collective. And now we got more friends than we know what to do with. But as a token of this, we've enjoyed everything we've done with the shag. And we love it to death. It doesn't let them death. Well, uh, I remember the beach so long ago. And uh, as a, a very small child, he used to set up pins, believe that or not. Uh, ten cents an alley. I'm talking about bowling pins. Used to do that. Then I had a snowball cart down, up and down the beach. And I served snowballs, you know, with the stuff on them. And and then I became a lifeguard, one of the Beaver Boys. It's been wonderful over the years. And the most wonderful thing about this whole thing is to see the friends that I haven't seen in 20 years, you know, to get together. Even though I haven't seen them in a long time, all of us, you know, we get together and uh, we didn't realize that we had so many good friends. North Myrtle Beach. That's what they call it now, but I, I, I never call it that. I call it Ocean Drive. We still Drive. call it Ocean this Drive is Ocean to this Drive, very right. day. We in Ocean Drive, Cherry Grove is right down there, and Crescent's right down there. But uh, I came down here, and, and uh, I just loved it, you know. And the first year I was uh, involved with calling bingo, and uh, my stand, the next year I was involved with a lifeguard. I couldn't swim, but I, I you know, I. I tricked old Beaver. You remember Beaver? My stand was right, right here, right, right here at this very site. This this place right yeah. here it was, was the bathhouse, and uh, I worked here for about four years, and uh, it was a hell of an experience. Is all I can tell you. Well, you're what we call one of the old original Beaver boys when uh, yeah. Roberts Pavilion was a wooden building here next door. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you want to tell us some things or maybe bring us up on this uh, shag and what's going on with it? Well, today? again, you know, shag, I don't know where that came from, but uh, we all just sort of danced, you know, and uh, the, thing I, the, the things I remember more about that than anything else is that uh, th there's no choreograph involved, you know. The only thing was that if you, uh, if you ever got out of step, here at Ocean Drive. They send your ass Cherry Grove for three days. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that, so I never did get out of step. You heard it here, folks. That's how it all began. SOS continues the old tradition for people who love the beach, beach music, dancing, and the freedom to slack off and party with people who know how to get the job done. Beach Pop Association. Well, tell us 
something about that group? Well, there's about 400 of us there in Jacksonville. They also have a Beach Pop Association down in Orlando. And we just get together about three or four times a week down in Jacksonville, have a good time, dance, drink, have fun. Well, now, do you do a similar dance to what the shag is, or is your dance something more different? There's a little different, but we can dance with each other. There's a little bit of a different step. I can't do the shag, they don't do the beach pop, but the beat's the same, so we dance with each other. But, but what you dance to in Jacksonville, Florida, is called the beach pop. Well, basically, it's the old 50s music. The old 50s. The old well, that's 50 what we 50. hear in the background here right. now, Jack. But we have one night a week we dance to the shag music, the South Carolina beach music. So you use the South Carolina beach music in Jacksonville, Florida exactly. at the Beach Jack's Beach Bop Association. Right. Well, that's terrific. It's all just one big party. <laughs> from the west coast i'm from san francisco and once i moved out here I, I came down to the beach here and and just loved it i fell in love with it and by god I'll, I'll never move back i went up to uh, virginia and lived there for a while and got involved with the shag club in fact we, we kind of got them rolling on real shag virginia beach was they kind of bop a little bit you know and then uh, in charleston i got involved with the charleston shag club and eventually with the geechee blast which is probably one of the best parties of the year well I, uh, I agree with you i just know that Geechee Blast is uh, just a one-of-a-kind of thing. This is a big get-together of everyone. Geechee Blast is a small get-together of 500 people or so, just to say hi to old friends. Coming up are the Living Legend Awards, Billy Ward's BMI presentation and solo dancing by Hall of Fame dancers. We're standing here in the front of the Sand Flea Promotions Sand Flea Circus Restaurant and Arcade owned by Don and Libby Reed. Well, tell us a little something about the Living Legends and what inspired that promotion well, that you did. Living Legends, the reason I started out was to recognize the people who did work on the beach and the old timers and give them a plaque to take home. They never won a trophy before, maybe, or maybe they did, a boxing trophy or something, or dancing trophy. But this, this gives us a, a kind of a unique club of the people who really did work on the beach. And we also keep a thing in the paper where you can join this if you're over 40 and worked on the beach. And you have to prove you worked on the beach and have to have some references. And eventually we're gonna have us a club. We may not ever get this big, we hope it don't. We hope it's about five, 600, and we're gonna have a, a reunion every year with that eventually. Well, I'm We've looking- got some pretty unique people in there right now. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I, I know you've got an, an eclectic uh, selection of members and, and honorees, and I want you to know that uh, from what I've heard from everybody, we all appreciate it. Uh, I feel highly honored that uh, you bestowed that on me, and uh, I hope you'll keep the Living Legends Awards going. We're going to, no and doubt about that. We'll keep that going. 